So as I said, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so yeah, I hope so too. Sick kids, it's like, ugh. Um, so uh, what I wanna do first off, before we start talking about the exam, I want to finish up where we were doing last class. Uh, so if you guys remember, we were doing um, uh, regression problems. Um, and so uh, have your TI calculator handy, either your TI-83 or your TI-84 calculator. Um, we're gonna need them a ton today. We're gonna work through two examples so you'll get a lot of practice and it'll also help you um, practice for the exam. And so after I get through two questions, uh, one second, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, after I get through two examples, I'm going to do a, um, Quick rundown. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, I'll do a quick rundown of the exam for you and I'll take homework questions. Okay. Does that sound okay with everybody? Let me just get through regression and then we'll do homework and exam stuff. Okay. Okay. All right, so everybody, I think, so going back, looking at the slides we did last class, we did this uh, one example about the um, hours of study and exam grade, okay? Oh, shoot, I didn't mean to do that. All right, so I wanna start off with this example here. Um, Okay, so the following table shows max dive times in minutes based on the depth in feet of a scuba diver. Okay. Has anybody ever been scuba diving just out of curiosity? Anybody? A couple people. Uh, to answer Caitlin, yes, it's gonna be on the exam. Yes. If I've been scuba diving once in my life, it's fun. Um, I did it overseas, so it was very different than it is here. I assume they just put the two, the tank on my back and threw me off the boat. It was kind of funny. Um, all right. So anyway, so what we have here is we have the depth in feet, right? And the max time you're allowed to dive. So for example, if you're going to go scuba diving at a depth of 20 feet, your max dive time is hundred minutes all the way down to, if you go down to a depth of 60 feet underwater, your max dive time is 70 minutes. All right, so um, the first thing it asks for you to def define is, it says, which is the response variable? Okay, that's the Y variable and which is the explanatory variable? Okay, that's the X variable. So generally it's better to start with the explanatory variable, right? Which one, which variable explains the other one? So does depth explain max dive time or does max dive time explain your depth, do you think? Max dive time explains the depth. So here's the, you could totally make an argument of that, right? Like if I wanna go um, a max dive time of hundred minutes, then my depth could be, could be 20. Um, so you totally could make that that explanation that way. Um, does anybody think that we could do it as depth explains max dive time though? Yes. Yeah, so, so there's two ways you could do it, right? I actually think um, the better way to do it this one is that the depth explains the max dive time. So I'm gonna have the explanatory variable be the depth and the response variable be the max dive time. I'll give you a hint. Um, whenever I give you a table of data, and this is just a general hint, okay? Um, I'm always gonna put the X variable first and then the Y, okay? So if you're unsure, um, you know, that's just something I do whenever I give you a table of data, okay? Um, I will put your mind at ease. Uh, the, the problem on the exam isn't like this. It just says, it just says X and Y variable. So you don't even have to stress about it on the exam. 
Okay, so the next thing it says is create a scatter plot for your data and comment on the relationship. So I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna use the TI-84 for this, but the options are the same in your TI-83, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do, everybody click on, uh, take out your calculator, everybody click on the Y equals button, okay? And if you haven't done anything since the last class, does everybody see in here, does anybody have an equation listed in here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do, this is the equation from the previous problem. Yep. You just clear it out. Just, just make sure you clear it out. Okay. So just hit clear and then enter because we don't want it in there. So then the next thing I need to do um, is I need to input my data in my calculator. All right. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the stat button. Okay. So everybody hit the stat button. And under number one, you want to edit the list. Okay. And if you have previous previous data in here, you have to clear it out. Okay. So what button do you never push? Does anybody remember what I said? You never push. Delete. Yeah. Don't hit delete. Do not hit delete. Okay. So everybody scroll to the top. Where L2 is hit clear, then enter. Scroll over to L1, hit clear, then enter. Okay, just clear it out. All right, so under L1, you have to put the X variable. So let's start doing that. It's 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And then over in L2, you're going to put the Y. So it's 100, 95, 91, 83 and 70. All right, so you just want to make sure you have it plugged in correctly paired like that. Okay. All right. Um, at this point now, uh, I want to I want to look at the graph of it. Okay. So just out of curiosity, is everybody with me at least having it plugged in? Yeah, double yeses. Okay. So let's hit the zoom button. So everybody hit zoom on your calculator and it's option number nine. So it's zoom nine. And how many people see that graph right there? Okay, good, 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 good. So the next thing you have to do is it said, create the scatter plot for the data and comment on the relationship. So when you look at this, using some of the, the vernacular that we've talked about in class, um, you know, what, does this look like kind of like a straight line? It's not perfect, but yeah, okay, all right. So it looks, what L word kind of describes that? Ne all right, linear, yep. And then Julia has it, it's sloping downward. Okay, so this looks like a negative linear relationship. Looks like a negative linear relationship. Okay. So the next thing it asks for is to calculate the value of R. And this R is what we call the linear correlation coefficient. Yep. Yeah, Julia, if the scatter plot is like all over the place, it would be described as no, no relationship. Yep. Yep. All right, so let's go back. Um, we're going to have, we're going to rely on, on the exam and even on your homework, we're going to rely on this calculator to do all this, uh, almost all, almost everything for us. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the stat button. Okay. And I'm going to scroll over to calc. So I hit when stat and then scroll over to calc. And does anybody remember what option we're going to use primarily here? Yep. Yep. Option number four, you want this linreg AX plus B. Linreg AX plus B. So I'm going to hit go down to four and I'm going to hit enter. 
And then if you have a TI-83, it just says Linreg AX plus B, just hit enter again if you have on your TI-83. On the TI-84, you're gonna scroll down to calculate and you should see something like this. Okay. How many people see these numbers here? I got one, I got you. Okay, if you reset your calculator, you're missing the R. So just to go back real quickly, anybody else missing R on their calculator? You have to turn diagnostic on, correct? Do you need me to walk you through it, Melissa, or do you, are you good? Okay. I like the nonchalant there. Nah, I got it. Yeah, just if you reset your calculator, you have to turn the diagnostics back on. All right, so here you see the value of R. So R is equal to negative 0 0.9701. Okay. And look at that. Um, it's really close to negative one. So it's telling us that there is a negative linear relationship there and um, phenomenal. That's what we thought we would get, okay? So look, on your exam, you're gonna have to do this. You're gonna have to plug in the data and calculate R. But look, does, is your calculator just giving it to you? Right, like the calculator is doing this for us. So, you know, just make sure you plug in your data correctly. All right, is everybody okay if I go to the, the next slide? Wait, what does R stand for again? So it's called the linear correlation coefficient. And what it does is it measures the strength of the linear relationship. Okay. okay. And so like if the value is close to positive one, it means there's, there's a strong positive linear relationship. And do you notice how this is close to negative one, negative 0 0.97, really close to negative one? Um, that, that's telling us that it's, there's evidence of a strong negative linear relationship. Okay. Okay. Professor, really quickly, R squared would be... So the R squared, we're not gonna talk about in this class, but just, just as a brief like side, side like lecture here, okay? So R squared is what's called the coefficient of determination. So it's 0 0.9411. Oh, okay. And I'm just gonna explain what it means, okay? So what it's saying is to go from 100 down to 95 minutes, the depth changes by 10 feet. Do we see that depth changes by 10 feet? So what this is saying is, look, 94% of that change in the y variable is explained by the change in the x variable. What that means is 6% of this change of five feet is explained by something else, okay? Um, and it's the same thing here. All it's saying is, look, as you change, what, what's causing y to change? Well, it's not just depth. There's probably some other things out there, okay? Um, and but 94% of the change in y is explained by the change in x. That's that's what the coefficient of determination is about. And if you guys end up going to graduate school and taking a methods course, you'll spend more time talking about r squared. But just for our class, we're 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 not going to focus on. It. All right, so let's go let's go into some next things. Okay, next it says find the least squares regression line. Okay, LSR, the least squares regression line. So the least squares regression line is this. Y hat is equal to uh, AX plus B. Okay. Well, look back on your calculator. Does it give you A and B right here? Yeah, yeah. So look, A is equal to negative 0 0.72 and B is equal to 116.6. All right, so just so we're clear here, all right, X 
the x variable in this problem is the depth in feet that you're underwater. And y hat, what y hat is, is it's the predicted y value, okay? And so what we're doing is we're predicting the max dive time. So it's the predicted or also referred to as the estimated max dive time. Okay, so that's what our equation is saying. Our equation is saying, look, if you give me X, I can predict or estimate the max dive time you're allowed to go. Okay, the next thing it says is interpret the slope here. So what is the value of the slope in this equation? Negative 0 0.72. It's negative 0 0.72. So what a slope is, a slope is a rate of change. Okay. Slope is a rate of change. Um, we only did this real briefly. I'm just going to go back for a second uh, here. Okay. So what the, the rate of change is in this case is um, when X changes by one, this is how much Y will change by on average. So when X changes by one, Y changes by negative 0 0.72. But how can we put that in the context of our problem like depth and max dive time like, can anybody put put it into words so it means so it's more relatable to the problem? When max dive time, um, wait. You have it backwards, but you're when, um, when depth uh, changes by one, then the max dive time changes by negative zero point seven two. Mm -hmm. So let me just put a little bit more little bit more verbiage here, but that's exactly right. Okay. When X, so when depth increases by one foot, okay, so for each additional foot, you're going to increase your depth, okay? Max dive time falls 0 0.72 minutes. So it falls or decreases. So look, uh, this is just basically what we're saying. And then I think this makes sense is look, the further you want to go scuba diving, the less time, um, uh, the less time you can spend underwater because of water pressure and things like that. Okay. So the next thing I said was um, sometimes it's reasonable to interpret the slope or, or excuse me, interpret the intercept. I'm sorry. And sometimes it's not. So the only way you can um, interpret the intercept Okay, is if zero is a reasonable value of x, and you have values of, of uh, x, values near x is equal to zero. Okay, so do I have any values of x close to zero here? Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I have 20, 30, 40, 50, like, is there anything, is there, is there like a, a five or a one or a two there? How close do they have to be? Like it, it depends on the context of the problem, right? That's what you have to figure out. And that's why it's hard. And here's another way to, here's another trick to it. If you plug zero in, okay? So X, remember the intercept occurs when X is equal to zero. So Y hat when X is equal to zero? is 116.6, right? That's the y-intercept. So what this is saying is, look, if you're gonna go and, and ask, ask yourself if this makes sense. If you're gonna go scuba diving, zero feet underwater, you can only do it for 116.6 minutes. Does that make sense? What do you guys think? Like if, so if I if I'm not if I'm zero feet underwater, it means I'm not scuba diving. Okay, so I can only go scuba diving when I'm really not scuba diving for 116 minutes. So it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really make sense, right? Like so you can't you can't remember y hat is is estimated max dive time, so you can't 
you can't estimate max dive time when you're when you're not underwater okay so that's what it means it's like it's not not really reasonable here okay so what that means is this intercept of 116.6 has no practical application has no practical meaning. Okay. Yep, yep, and I'm gonna, and you'll see Julia, I'm just gonna skip ahead for a second. I'm gonna do a um, another example here where maybe it, it, it is reasonable, okay? Okay. All right, um, so now let's start using our regression equation, okay? Is everybody okay if I go on to the, uh, uh, the next slide? Okay, and just so we're clear, the intercept is still part of the model. It just doesn't have any practical application. You can think of it as kind of like noise in the model. Like you need it, it needs to be part of the equation, but you just can't interpret it in any practical manner. That's, that's really what's going on here. Okay. So here's the next question. Estimate the max dive time at a depth of 55 feet. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, look. There is no depth. There's nothing on the chart here for 55 feet. Okay, so I wanna estimate the max dive time. Um, if, if, I, if I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go scuba diving at 55 feet. How long could I go diving for? Okay, so this you're going to need to use your equation. So you're going to need to use this y hat is equal to negative 0 0.72x plus 116.6. Okay, um, uh, how would I, how would I solve this? Would you plug 55 in for x? That's exactly it. Yeah, you're given x here. You're given 55 feet. So you're going to plug x is equal to 55 into equation. Uh, Kayla, it looks like you actually added instead of subtract. You have to, I'll show you how to do it. You made a little bit of an error there. So it's y hat is equal to negative 0 0.72 times 55 plus 116.6. I'll show you. Hold on. Let's watch my calculator. Okay. You have to be careful of this negative here. Okay. So it is negative. So look, here's the negative sign. Negative 0 0.72 times 55 plus 116.6. And the correct answer is 77 here. Yeah. So if you if you made a mistake, it's probably honestly you forgot the negative here. Okay, that's just incredibly important. Yep. It's okay. I forget the negatives all the time. All right, so let me just, you know, put some words to this, okay? The estimated max dive time at a depth of 55 feet is 77 minutes. And if you look back here, let's see if that makes sense, right? So 55 is somewhere between 50 and 60, 77 is somewhere between here. So it, it makes sense, it works out. All right, that one pretty straightforward. I think you could handle one of these questions on the exam. I got one totally, one yes. Okay. So here's the next question. Um, at what max depth could you dive for 60 minutes? So I'm asking you to asking to solve for max depth. All right. So here's this is weird. This seems a little bit different. What variable am I asking you to solve for here? Why? 
what what is what variable is maxed out? Oh, you're solving for x, so you plug in y. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm asking you to solve for for x for max depth. So I'm asking you to solve for x here. So to do that, you have to be given y. Okay. And look, I do. Could you dive for 60 minutes? So if you want to dive for 60 minutes, um, I, Melissa, give me a second. I'll get there. <laughs> I'm a little slow today. Uh, you have to be given why. And I, and I do give you that. Okay. So you're going to take your equation. Y hat is equal to negative 0.72x plus 116.6. And what you need to do is you need to take a plug in 60 here. So it's 60 is equal to negative 0.72x plus 116.6. All right, so let's solve this. Um, you know, it's just a straight linear equation. What's the first thing I need to do to solve this? Isolate the variable. Okay, so what do I have to subtract to each side so first? Subtract one, uh, 116.6. Yep. Let's grab our trusty calculator. So it's 60 minus 116.6. You get negative 56.6. All right, and then what are you going to divide both sides by here? Negative 0.72. Yep, and a negative divided by a negative becomes a? Positive. Yes, these guys are gone. So let's see, I'm going to divide by negative 0.72. And yep, 70, Melissa has it there, 78.6. On the test, will you like um, in the instructions write like what to round to or should we? So as soon as I'm done with these examples, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up your test and show you exactly what you're going to have to do. Okay. Okay. So, you know, you guys are all going to get a little preview of the test. I hope that's okay. Everyone's like, of course, it's okay. <laughs> um, so just, I'm just going to put in words here. Okay. The max depth for a 60 minute dive is 78.6 feet. Okay. All right, so your exam is gonna focus on these things. Okay, it's gonna ask you to cal calculate the value of R. It's gonna ask you to find the linear the least squares regression line, the best fit line, okay? It's gonna ask you to solve some problems just like this one and this one, okay? So not too bad? Hopefully not too bad. All right, but just to be sure, glad it's easy. Let's, let's just do one more problem, okay? And then we'll put, put this stuff to bed, okay? Everybody okay if I go to the next slide? Okay. All right. So here we go. Um, I have this problem. And it says, I'm given the number of uh, absences in the final grade, okay? So the first thing it says is create the scatter plot and comment on the relationship. Um, so before I do that, okay, I have to figure out what my X and Y variables are. So X variable is the explanatory. And the Y is the response. Okay. So look, um, what do you think, um, 
What do you think explains the other one? Does the number of absence explain the final grade or does final grade explain absences? So what do you think the X variable is here? And remember my tip that I said in the previous example. Um, the number of absences affect final grade. Yeah, that's what I think, right? Uh, that's what I think it explains here. Yeah, yeah. So the explanatory variable here is the number of absences. And the response variable is your final grade, right? And, and, and so I think that makes sense, right? Like the number of times you miss class, um, uh, you know, is going to impact your grade. All right, so let's let's go in here. And what I'm going to have to do first is I'm going to have to click my stat button, and I'm going to have to go into edit here. And what do I have to do with this data from the previous example? Clear it. You have to clear it. You always have to clear it. You're going to go to the top and you're going to clear it. Okay. So then what you're going to do is just make sure you put it in the order it's given. So under L1 for X, you're going to put 10, 10 absences, yikes, 12 absences, Ooh. two, zero, that's the best, eight, five, and then one. And then L2, you're going to put the final grade. 60, 50, 90, 100, 70, 80, and then 92. Okay. All right, how many people got the data plugged in with me here? Got a couple, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, look at the scatter plot, right? Um, so how do I do that? Zoom nine. Yep. You're going to hit zoom and then it's option number nine, right? Because the problem is zoom to your previous example. And you should see something like this, okay? Um, Kind of looks like the same relationship, right? As the previous example, negative linear relationship. Yep, yep, it looks like a straight line almost. Not perfect, none of this stuff should be perfect, straight line, but it's definitely that linear pattern and it's sloping downward. So it looks like, again, we have this negative linear relationship. negative linear relationship. All right, so the next thing it says is um, calculate the value of R, all right? So again, the linear correlation coefficient. So I forgot how to do that. Can somebody remind me? You go to stat and then calc and then four. Yep. You hit stat, you scroll over to the calc, you scroll down to option number four here. Okay. So I'm gonna hit enter here. So again, if you have the TI-83, you just hit enter again. TI-84, you gotta go down to calculate and hit enter. And how many people see this? Got it. Anybody else? Got one, two, three, okay. So look, you can see right here, uh, the last one is R. So R is equal to negative 0 0.9948 when I round it. So negative 0 0.9948, the four decimal places. Okay. Is that value really close to negative one? Yeah. Yes, it's like super close to negative one. So what this means is there's is, there is strong evidence here of a negative linear relationship. Okay. Um, 
pretty good so far. So the next thing, everybody, so good on that, right? So the next thing it says is find the LSR, the best fit line, least scores regression line. Well, the good news is if you look right back at your calculator, boom, we got it, okay? So I'm gonna round everything to two decimal points here, okay? So my slope is A is negative 3.87. And my intercept is 98.46, okay? So it's always y hat is equal to ax plus b and y hat is equal to, I always forget it as soon as I say it, negative 3.87 plus 98.46. Okay, um, and just so we're clear here, okay, what does the X variable represent here? Absences. Yep, X is the number of absences. And what is Y, Y hat, or Y estimated, Y predicted here, tell us. Final grade. Yep, it's the predicted. Final grade. All right, I, I didn't do this in the last example, so I just wanna do it in this one, just so you can see. What I wanna do is I wanna plug this equation in and just verify that it, it fits the data well, okay? So go back to your Y equals. So on your calculator, hit the Y equals button. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna input this equation right here. So you're going to go negative 3.87. And then look on your calculator. It doesn't matter if you have the TI-83 or the TI-84. There's this button here, XT, theta, N, a bunch of different things here. If you click that, that'll put the X variable in, plus 98.46. And then just hit Enter. and then hit your graph button. And you should see something that looks like this, okay? How many people have this on their calculator with me? Yeah, so does this line fit the data well, just out of curiosity? Yeah, totally, pretty good, pretty good. It is the best, okay? So the, the line fits the data well, darn good, there we go. I'll, I'll even put that in here. Okay. Um, the next question says predict the final grade for four absences. Okay. So what variable are you given here? X. Yep, you're given four absences, given X is equal to four. So you just have to plug in. Yep, so you're just gonna use your equation. Y hat is equal to minus 3.87 times four, because you're plugging X in for four, plus Let's see, let's see what I get, okay? So you're gonna plug in minus 3.87 times four plus 98.46. How many people got this right here? I got two in the chat, yeah, so it's 92, so I'm just gonna round it to an 83 here, okay? Okay, so this is what's going on. We estimate a final grade of 83 with four absences. So I'll tell you to round on the test. I'm gonna show you the test, 
Okay, so you don't have to, don't have, it'll, it'll, it'll be written in the instructions for you. Okay. Um, next question. Do, 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 do. Um, estimate the number of absences. Um, we're a final grade of 87. So you can kind of see what this is. What's going on. Somebody got a phone call during class. I hope it wasn't spam. No, LOL. Okay, I guess that joke wasn't actually really, really funny. Um, so what variable are you given here? Y. Yep. Oh my God, yes, Melissa. I get that, I get that from like cars, like three cars ago. So you're gonna plug this into equation. Yeah. So you're given y here and you're asked to estimate the number of absences. So you're trying to solve for x. So it's going to be 87 is equal to minus 3.87 times x plus 98.46. So you're just gonna solve here, just like a straight linear equation. So you're gonna minus 98.46 from both sides. So these guys are gone. So grab that trusty calculator. So it's gonna be 87 minus 98.46. You get minus 11.46. And then what's the last step? You're gonna divide each side by what? Yep. Yep, I'll get to that in a second. So when you do that, you get X is equal to Yep, it's 2.96, so I'm gonna round it to three. So what's going on here is we estimate someone who has a final exam or a final grade of 87 had three absences. Professor, I just have a quick question. Yeah. For the exam, can we just um uh just do like x equals three instead of like writing um this? Um, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you on the exam what you have to put in. Oh, okay. So because like if this was an in person class, you know, I'd have you all hand papers to me and I would look at them and you know, but so I'll show you how how the exam is gonna be done. Okay. All right. Does everybody um. Um, are everybody feel like they could handle handle this on the exam? Everybody comfortable, not comfortable? It's a lot of calculator work, you know? Yeah. yeah it isn't the worst. Okay. All right. Um, I know I said no break, but is everybody okay if we just take a quick five minute break? Yes. So quick five minute break. So it is 145. Um, I'll be back at 150. Okay. And then I'll do homework questions and exam review. Okay, everybody. So legit be back in five minutes, four minutes and 30 seconds now.
Okay, can uh, everybody hear me? Just checking my mic real quick. Okay. So the first thing I wanna do before I talk about the exam, okay? Um, let me just... Does anybody have any questions about the homework that they would like to see me go over? Yeah. Go on ahead. Okay. I think it was the question about the bolts. Okay. Yeah. Question number three. Everybody has a problem with question number three, right? Yeah. No. I got this, the first part, like that's fine. That makes sense to me. Um, you just use like the Z square formula, but for the second one, I was like, I don't know how. Right. I'm just going to walk, you know what, I'm just going to do this problem for everybody. Okay. Okay. Because for as long as I've been, I, I got to take this question off, but it's, it's like, it's a good, like, just thought question. Okay. okay. So here's the problem. So a manufacturer of bolts uh, has a quality control policy. Okay. That requires it. Is there one question? You said? Uh, that was just, um, uh, just before I get into this, Melissa, it was um, this question right here, but you can do all the problems on the homework now. Okay. All right. So here's question three. A manufacturer of bolts has a quality control policy that requires it to destroy any bolts that are more than two standard deviations from the mean. Okay. So uh, a quality control engineer knows that bolts coming off the assembly line have lengths that follow a normal distribution with a mean of eight centimeters and a standard deviation of 0.5 centimeters, okay. So um, here's, here, here's the problem, okay. So we have these bolts, right, that are coming off the assembly line. Okay, right, something like this. And what's going on is, look, we can't, these, this manufacturer says we can't send these bolts out if they're too big or too small. Okay, so the, what's the cutoff for being too big or too small? Okay, so it says that on average, their mean is eight centimeters. Okay, their length here and the standard deviation is 0 0.5 centimeters. And the problem said, um, uh, anything that is more than two standard deviations from the mean needs to go get thrown away, okay? So if you you can be more than two standard deviations from the mean two different ways, right? Like the bolts can be either too small or too big, okay? Um, so if one standard deviation is 0.5 centimeters, what is two standard deviations? What length is that? Okay, exactly. It, it's one centimeter, right? So does, does that make sense to everybody that like if one standard deviation is 0.5 centimeters, two standard deviations would be one centimeter, right? So what, below what length would, would the bolts be too small? Below, that's exactly it. How did you get that, Melissa? You're, you're exactly right. Yep, yep. So if you're more than two centimeters away from the mean, or excuse me, one centimeter away from the mean, so anything less than eight centimeters minus this one centimeter, Anything less than seven centimeters needs to be thrown away. And what, what size bolts would be too big?
Yeah. If you take the eight centimeters plus one centimeter and you get nine centimeters. So anything less than seven centimeters, they need to throw away. And anything more than nine centimeters, they need to throw away. Okay, because anything less than seven centimeters, the balls would be the bolts would be too small. Anything more than nine centimeters and the bolts would be too big. Okay. So having seen me work the first part, does that kind of make sense? You know, that makes more sense. I was just confused on it. And so I looked it up and there was like decimal points and they were getting like 7.9 and like 9.1. And I was really confused. Sure. Now that you explained it, it makes more sense. Yeah. Now let's look at the second part. Okay. Second part you asked, um, it's actually a problem like way back to like our third lecture that I kind of just threw in there to see if people would remember. Okay. Between what two lengths would you expect 68% of all bolts to fall? And there was something called the empirical rule. And it said this, if you fall, if you, if your data follows a normal distribution, which is what I tell you, normal distribution right there, boom, normal distribution. 68% um, of data, in this case, data would be the bolts length fall between the mean minus one standard deviation and all the way to the mean plus one standard deviation. So again, look, I give you the mean minus one standard deviation, so minus 0.5, and then I give you the mean plus one standard deviation. So 68% of the bolts that come off the assembly line will be between 7.5 centimeters and 8.5 centimeters. So like, as you can see here, the math for this problem wasn't hard, right? Like it's just simple addition, subtraction. It was like just kind of figuring out what was being asked uh, was the hard part here. Okay. Everybody feel okay? Don't worry, there's not a problem like this on the exam, okay? You're more than welcome. Are there any other homework problems that are giving people trouble? Can you go over uh, two? Problem two, yeah. So this is the weighted mean, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I can't type in here. Um, so let me just try one thing real quick. Give me a second. All right, so it says find the weighted mean for income uh, using population as uh, the weighting variable. Okay, so the weighted mean was given by this formula. It's the sum of each X variable, X of I times their weights divided by the sum of the weights, okay? So we did two examples of this in class. Um, do you guys remember uh, the life expectancy one and the um, GPA example? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's saying here, find the weighted mean for income. So that tells me income is the X of I using population as the weights. So what you would need to do here, I'll just get you started. You would need to take each X and multiply it by its weight plus 40 times nine plus 30 times 0.8. plus 35 times 1.2, plus 45 times eight. And then you need to divide by the sum of the weights. So these are the weights. And you have to figure out what that is. Um, what's really tricky about this problem, and you have to figure this out, is income is in thousands of dollars and population is in millions. 
So you have to figure out what the final answer is going to be in terms of. Is it going to be in terms of thousands or in terms of millions? Okay. So I, I'm sorry, who asked that question? Jamie. Jamie, thanks. But at least see, having me seen the setup, Jamie, does it make sense how you solve it from here? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. More than welcome. Any other homework questions? I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, hold on, which one was it? Oh, it was for, for problem seven for the standard deviation. Um, isn't there in the calculator, doesn't it tell you the standard deviation? I it does. And I'm actually gonna do a review problem that's just like this. Okay, because I forgot which one it was and that's I did okay. it all out by hand. And then I realized I looked at the calculator. I was like, oh, I didn't have to do all that work. But um, uh, yeah, I'll do a, do a question number seven that, that helps you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, Taylor, I don't understand your question. I added them all up and then multiplied the two, then divided. Uh, yeah, if you just follow the correct order of operations here. Um, like I added the income, all of the incomes, and then I added all of the population and then. No, yeah, don't do that. No, you have to follow this formula. Okay. You have to multiply first and then add them separately. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise you'll get a, I don't know what you'll even get. I'm going to go over standard deviation. Yep. I'm going to do a review problem for that. Yep. Don't worry, Kayla. Yep. I just wanted to clear out any final homework questions. I have one more question. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you um, convert the thousands into millions? So ha, that, that's the hard part here, okay? So I don't necessarily wanna give this away, okay? So you have uh, thousands times millions divided by millions, okay? So think about what's going on here. You have thousands. In the numerator, it's thousands of dollars times millions of people. And then you're dividing in the numerator, it's just millions of people. Okay, did like, does anything cancel out? The millions? Maybe, maybe not. Yes, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't just want to tell you, but like now that you see it, you can kind of see how, what you should put your final answer in terms of. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Uh, any other, the rest of it should be hopefully kind of straightforward. Anytime Thursday, Melissa. It's open till 11.59 Thursday, your homework. You are welcome. Okay. So now let's talk about the exam. Okay. Do, do, do. Exam number one. All right, when you log into the classroom, you're gonna notice I have a new tab here called exams, okay? When you come into class, the exam is not posted there. You will see a button for an exam. So let me just show you. Okay. So when you actually log in, you'll click here and your exam item was hidden from students. Okay. And it's going to be available 10 minutes before class. Okay. So please listen to me. Okay. Do not start the exam before class. Okay. I, there's, I just want everybody to, um, started at the same time. Like I, I just, I don't want you to um, depress anything you shouldn't have. Okay. But let me, let me just click on the exam and show you what it's going to look like. Okay. So your exam is going to open up. Everybody can see this here. Pretty good. Okay. I got one, I guess Melissa is the only person paying attention. <laughs> okay, a couple people here. Okay, so your exam is 37 questions, okay? All right. And what you can see here is some of the questions involve um, multiple choice, and I'm going to go over the questions in a second here, okay? Um, so like, for example, I'm going to give you, give you problem, the answer to problem number one on the exam, so nobody should miss it, okay? It says the following data type variables classified as one of the following options below. So if we were to have the variable eye color, okay, 
you'd have to you'd have to select is it qualitative, quantitative, discrete, quantitative, continuous, or none of the above. Well, eye color we know is a qualitative variable. So you would just click this, and then when you want, when you're ready, when you're sure that's the answer, you click save answer and boop, save. You're good. Okay. And then you go to the next problem. Okay. Problems that ask you to input a number, okay? Like question nine asks the z-score problem, okay? It says, you'll notice it says round to two decimal places. Okay, so you'll put in like 1.25. I don't know if that's the answer, by the way. And then you click save answer. To alleviate some stress, I built in a tolerance here. So if you actually rounded wrong and put in like 1.24, um, it'll still accept the answer. So don't stress about that. And then you can see, you know, like questions that don't involve rounding, um, it won't say anything, okay? So like question 12, the answer will be something like 10 or 15 or something, whatever. You'll, you'll, um, you won't have to round it, but if it does involve rounding, look, round to two decimal places, okay? If something comes up as a mean, and it doesn't say round and you get an answer like 30.25, just put that in, in, in your exam, okay? So this is your exam. So it'll all be opened all up at once and you can see how much points each question is worth. And, you know, you can kind of see what the exam is gonna look like, okay? All right, um, before I leave the exam, does anybody have any questions about that? Um, how many questions total again? I think it was like 30, right? Or... Uh, 37. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. Will we ever have to submit you any form of paperwork for the exam? No. You will not. So the questions are all or nothing. Okay, there's no partial credit for it. I know that's that stresses people out, but the exam is actually very, 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 very manageable. Okay. I promise you it is. Any other questions before I go into a little bit of a review? Yep. So here's what will happen. Class will start at one. I will say, okay, everybody go click on the exam. You'll click on your exam and you'll click start. Okay. And there are no units on it, Melissa. No. Um, when you hit continue to start your exam, what will happen is, is I will stay in Zoom. You don't have to, okay? I will stay in Zoom and answer any questions people have, okay? So sometimes people are like, hey, Matt, I don't really understand what you meant by this, you know? And to be honest with you, sometimes I make like little typos in the exam. So sometimes we catch that, you know, on Zoom. Someone's like, hey, Matt, I got to problem 15. I think you made a typo. And it's like, oh, oh, no, I did. So, you know, if you're on Zoom, you'll be able to hear me correct that. Okay, then what will happen is um, as class ends at one, uh, what time is class end? At 2.50, what will happen is um, I'll say, okay, everybody, you need to submit your exam, okay? Some people have extended time. If you have extended time and it's documented, um, you can continue working, but if you do not, you have to submit, okay? And you'll click submit, and then what will happen is, is you will, it will, the exam will be automatically graded for you. And at 4 p.m. on Thursday, you'll be able to see your exam and the correct answer to all the questions, okay? What you'll do is there's this tab called Student Grades. You'll click on it and you'll be able to see your grade on exam number one. Ooh, 97 points, I have to fix that, okay? So if we have a question, go on Zoom and ask, yep. So you can be in Zoom the entire time. So generally what happens is um, Zoom is very quiet during the exam. Um, and you know only people chime in if they have questions or you can even post in chat. Or, uh, no, it depends on the exam, to be honest with you. Yeah, not all 30, some of them, some will be less, some might be more. It just depends on, on the, it, it, it seems like a lot of questions, but it's actually not. No, and I'll, you, you know, once you get into it, you'll see it's actually not that many questions. 
I mean, it is 37 questions, but it's not like 37 really hard questions. Some of the questions will take you 10 seconds to answer. All right, any other questions before I do a quick review for you? If you don't mind, can we quickly look at how to get R on the calculator? Sure, sure, sure. I want to just drop. Now, do you, um, now are you asking about R because you um, have your diagnostics off or you need me to do like the options again? I have my diagnostics off. You, so you need to turn your diagnostics on is what you're saying? Correct. Okay, so what type of calculator do you have? TI-84. So it's this one right here, right? Yes. Okay, so hit your second function. And then do you see this option down here that says catalog? Yes. Click that and you should see this. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you see where my mouse is over this X with the negative one here? Yes, I do. Okay, click on that. And now you're gonna scroll down till you see something called diagnostic on. All right. Just hit enter. Mm -hmm. And then just hit enter again. Awesome. Thank you. Be all, set. all right, because I was always getting like A and B, but never R. But right. now you'll get R. Yeah. And so just so you're clear, if you run into um, calculator questions on the exam, uh, you can ask that on Zoom and stuff, and I'll and I'll help you all. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right, so to help you get ready for the exam, I am gonna do a problem, but I wanna walk you through uh, the problems on the exam. So there's 37 questions, okay. Okay, so problems number one through number eight are data types, okay? Uh, on, you know, qualitative, quantitative, discrete, continuous. Problems number nine through number 11, it's a z-score question. Problems number 12 through numbers 14 is histogram question. And really what the question is, is reading a histogram, not constructing it. Problems number 15 through numbers 26 is data analysis. And the good news with these problems, okay, we're gonna use your calculator. Then problems number 27 through numbers 33 are the regression stuff. Again, you're gonna use your calculator. And then finally problems number 34 through numbers 37 There are other type of questions. So th these are only worth nine points, these, these total of nine points, problems 34 to 37, but I'm not gonna tell you what type of questions they are, okay? So you can, you know, you can, you, you'll have to figure them out as when you get to them, okay? They're gonna involve you to think a little bit outside the box, or maybe not, I don't know, some of them, only one of them really requires you to think outside the box. All right. Um, the exam, the questions are going to come at you exactly in this order. So you have nothing to stress about with it, anything like that. Okay. So what I want to focus on with the review, because I remember I have to leave in 15 minutes. Uh, I want to focus on this right here. Okay. But before I move on, does anybody have any questions about data types, Z scores, histogram regression was what we spent the first hour of class doing. Everybody good? Okay. All right, so you're gonna get a question on your test. 
it's going to have a data set that looks like this. It's going to be in brackets. So imagine you have this data set. It's the numbers 2, 5, and then it goes uh, 36, 40, 45, 47, 48, 50, 52, 55, 57, 60, 65, and 71. Okay. Everybody see that right there? Okay. So the first thing it's going to ask you, um, you're going to see this data set and it's going to just say questions like this. Find the mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our trusty calculator and we're going to have our calculator do all this for us. Okay, so everybody take out your calculator. I'm actually going to do the TI-83 because I've been doing the TI-84 for a while. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our data and input it in our calculator. So everybody hit the stat button on their calculator. You're going to go to number one. You're going to edit the list. And if you have anything in L1, which you, you should from the class, okay, um, you're going to clear, go to the top, and you're going to hit clear, then enter. So everybody begin the process of, in list one, putting in these numbers. 2, 5, 36, then 40, 45, 47, 48, 50, 52, 55, 57, 60, 65 and then 71. Okay. Is everybody with me who's been following along? Does everybody have it plugged in? Yes. Okay. So the option to have our calculator do a lot of this data analysis, repress the stat button, and then you're gonna scroll over to calc. And does anybody remember the option to have your calculator do the uh, summary statistics? Yeah, Melissa has it. It's option number one, it's one dash bar stats, okay? So under number one, you're just gonna hit enter. Now the see with the TI-83, it looks like this, you just hit enter again. But if you have a TI-84, um, you have to scroll down to calculate and you should see something that looks like this, okay? How many people have these numbers here? Got it, jaw, okay. Anybody else? Okay. So look, right at the top, it says X bar, that's your mean, okay? So it's gonna be 45.21. We'll take everything to two decimal places here, 45.21. The next question might be something like this, find the sample standard deviation. So if you look back on your calculator, do you notice where it says S sub X and Sigma sub X there? Okay. S sub X is the sample standard deviation and Sigma sub X is the um, population standard deviation. All right, so this one here, it's gonna be 19.97 right here, 19.97. That's my stand sample standard deviation. The next question might be something like this, find the range. Okay, does anybody remember the formula for the range? The highest minus the lowest, max minus min. Yep, so your calculator doesn't explicitly give it to you, but you can do this, 71 minus two, the range is 69 here. The next thing might be find the quartiles. Right. So your calculator does this. If you look back at your calculator and you just click this scroll down button, you can see Q1 is 40, the medium, the MED median 49, that's Q2, and Q3 is 57. So Q1 is equal to 40, 
Oh my God, I, I have the worst like short-term memory, 49 and Q3 is 57. The next thing might be find the interquartile range, the IQR. Okay. Uh, does anybody remember the formula for the interquartile range? Q3 minus Q1. Yep. So we just have to on our own take Q3 minus Q1. That's 57 minus 40. That gets me 17. The next thing we're going to have to do is identify outliers. And we're going to do that using cutoff values. So you need to remember the formula for this, OK? Um, just by looking at the data set here, OK? Um, does anything look like it could be outliers? Did any numbers look really high or really low compared to the other ones? Yeah, so the list is right, maybe two and five. Maybe two and five are outliers here. But what we need to do is we need to find these cutoff values to test for it, okay? So the lower cutoff, you're gonna to have to calculate this on the exam. It's gonna ask you, what is the lower cutoff score? So that is just Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So you're going to have to take 40 minus 1.5 times 17. That's why we find the, find the IQR. Yeah. So it's 40 minus 1.5 times 17 is 14.5. So what you have to do is you have to look back at the data set, okay? Are there any values that are less than 14.5? Um, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this, this data set has two outliers here. It has two and five, okay? I'm also gonna ask you to calculate the upper cutoff regardless, even if there's no upper outliers. So that's just Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So Q3 is 57 plus 1.5 times 17. Gets you 82.5. Looking at the data set, are there any values greater than 82.5? No, so there's no upper outliers. I have a question, Professor. Of course. Um, do we always have to plug it in like that on the calculator, like 40 minus 1.5 times 17? Because if I like do it separately, like 40 minus 1.5 and then multiply 17, it gives me a different number. It does, because yeah. what it does, if you plug it in that way, your calculator yeah. does this. It does this subtraction first, and then whatever you get there, it multiplies it by 17, which is not what the formula is. Oh, okay. So we would always have to do it like that for this class. Yes. Yes. Well, you have to do that in general, right? Like you, you, you have to follow the correct order of operations for that. So you have to plug it in the way I've been doing in the calculator. Uh, okay. And, and Kayla, remember under uh, one bar stat, if you scroll down, it says what Q1 and uh, Q3 is there. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you what the, the scatter plot looks like. So just follow along on the screen. You don't have to do, do this right now, but I'm gonna go second function stat plot. I'm gonna turn my plot on and I'm just gonna select box plot without liar here. And then when I do, Come on, what happened here? Oh, I forgot to turn it on. <laughs> you can see that it puts the two outliers there, okay? Which is what we found. We said two and five was an outlier. And if you look real carefully, you can see that there's two little boxes there for the outlier, okay? 
Um, otherwise, your exam is pretty straightforward, okay? Um, I'm gonna save these notes and post them to class. Um, does anybody have any last minute questions for me? Yeah, go ahead. Um, will it say uh, sample or population so we know to use like big S or the little sigma? Yeah, yeah. So all the problems that ask you just to clarify. So uh, the question, what it'll say was, um, it'll either say you have a sample set of data and then it'll say find the standard deviation. So you'll know that it's the sample standard deviation. Um, but the problem that asks you to do this on the exam, it's just a sample. So just use S, just make okay. sure you use S. All right, thanks. No problem. Any other questions for me? Yeah, it's open notes, open calculator. I will say this though, if you don't, if you don't at least organize your notes or make a cheat sheet, uh, open notes doesn't help you because you'll be flipping, you'll spend your two hours flipping through your notes, but it, it is open notes, yes. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Um.